Uh, your worship, uh, colleagues, uh, our presenters for the day, uh, welcome to this uh, training of the East Africa Law Society. Uh, it's a training that uh, is quite technical uh, because it looks at uh, the technicalities around filing of uh, documents before the court, the electronic, the recently uh, launched electronic filing platform. Uh, we are lucky to have the East African Court of Justice partner with us in bringing advocates this training. It's very important for their practice before the court. Uh, we already understand that uh, practice before the regional court has been made much easier uh, with the launch of uh, virtual hearings and virtual proceedings. Uh, so, so this is a very important training to any advocate who has intentions of appearing before this regional body. And for you to be able to fully utilize the systems that have been launched by the court, it will be important that you get understanding of this very important system. Uh, we are lucky, as I said earlier, to have uh, the personnel that have played a key role in the launch of this system. Uh, Mr. Arnold Gahimbare, led by, of course, the Registrar of the Court, Mr. Boniface Ogoti. These are very important people who have ensured that this system actually is rolled out. So we are getting this information from, if I may call it, the source. Uh, so welcome and thank, thank you for taking your time uh, to join this session. Unfortunately, our CEO will not join us. Uh, he was to do the opening. Uh, but he's uh, gotten an engagement elsewhere that will not uh, be avoided. So in, on this note, I'm opening the session and requesting the, uh, His Worship the Registrar to make his opening remarks and then officially open. Thank you very much, uh, David, and uh, all the participants. We thought we should partner up with the East African Law Society to bring you on board, especially those who practice at the international level to our courts and those who may wish to in the future practice in our courts. This is not just because of COVID that we went virtual, but it's also grounded on the fact that if you look at our mission, it says that we are aiming at being, I mean, our vision, we are aiming at being a world-class court dispensing quality justice for a prosperous community. Now we cannot be a world-class court still doing things the way they were being done in court 20 years ago. We are looking at a system or we have a system where we shall be completely paperless. Judges will not be walking into the court with files lawyers possibly will not be walking into, into court with files, but everything else will be able to be done, paperless. So we rolled out this system. We are slowly bringing you the lawyers on board. Once we are satisfied that you have the capacity to use our system, we shall completely lock out paper transactions. You will not be able to file any paper with us if you don't log on to the system everything else will be available easily from us through the system whether it's the court order whether it's the proceedings whether it's affidavit of service everything will be there so i'll encourage that if you practice in these courts or you intend to practice in this court you take this seriously i believe this will not be the first one we are going to do very many other similar series at the same time as we are doing this with you we are also taking our judges through the same same system so that they are comfortable with it now, without wasting time, because you may have a lot of questions as we go, may I allow my technical team to take over and take us through the system we have picked on just a simple case where we have only one applicant and one respondent. But we'll go through it, how the applicant files the references, how the affidavit of service is generated, how the defense is filed, the response is filed, how an application is filed, 
And if possible, uh, try to see even where we have multiple, uh, multiple uh, parties. That is time allowing. So Arnold, uh, please take over from there. Thank you very much, Your Worship. Good afternoon, everybody. Without wasting further time, I am going to share my screen for a brief presentation on the e-filing system. Kindly let me know when you're able to see my screen. We can see it, uh, Anand. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I will start with the quote, a quote by Donna H. in his book, Enhancing Justice Administration in Nigeria Through Information Communication Technology. His quote was, one can wonder how the judges will use the old infrastructure to solve issues of the 21st century. Just like His Worship the Registrar had said, there is no way in this current era, we can still operate in the same way. Even if it wasn't for the current pandemic, times have changed. There is now the new concept referred to as courts of the future. This is where, as the registrar said, we have to go paperless, not only to ease the work, but also to be efficient and keeping in mind environment, our environment. The paperwork and the lot of papers used in courts, you know it much more than I do, is a lot. And remember, papers equal to trees cut. Now there is a solution, which is ICT. And ESCJ is among the courts which are leading in the continent. We have something we refer to as case management and recording system at the East African Court of Justice. This system is technology which is used to control knowledge and methodologies for managing the life cycle of a case, which means we are not creating any new processes. We are only digitizing the current court processes, as simple as that. It provides sophisticated information management and workflow practices. It transforms courts workflows into electronic format. Should we forget about anything, let's remember this last phrase. This system transforms courts existing workflows and processes into electronic formats. So we are not bringing anything new, we are just doing the same in a better improved way. The brief history from where ESCJ started from, this is not a new project, just like his worship the registrar said, we started way back in 2013, when we started implementing case management and recording system. This was launched on 30th April 2014 by the ESC heads of state during their summit in Arusha which means it was at the highest level. The system was take, developed using, as I said, the current existing court processes and the rules of procedure and arbitration. As the rules change, we also keep changing and upgrading the system. It has many modules, but now we are referring and we are more concerned with e-filing system. There are so many modules, but our concern right now is e-filing, which can allow stakeholders, lawyers, litigants themselves to file cases electronically in the comfort of their homes, their offices, as long as they have internet access and they have been trained on how to use the system. The system is built to be accessed from anywhere, as I said, by authorized court users, but also 
the litigants and external parties have access and authorized credentials. I underline authorized credentials because at times people feel like we are putting everything in the hands of technology in the air, but we are controlling this. It should be understood that this is controlled and made as much secure as we can. And this is work in progress. We'll never stop improving and making sure it is secured. In a nutshell, this is the system itself. We have different sub-registries and we have backup servers, but we also have at the East, East African Court of Justice headquarters where the whole system sits. But also definitely in the middle here, you see we rely on internet. The functionalities, you can create participants, register uh, functions and events, schedule functions, calendar, document generation, hearing function, and disposition as well. But also, we work on a clay case, we close it, accounting functions, it has security, these are the features, security and uh, integrity function, so that we know for sure what the litigant filed is what is heard in the court of law, is what the court clerk processes, is what the other party receives. That integrity is a very integral and important part of this system. Otherwise, the system will not be trusted. Then we have electronic filing system, which is our main topic today. So how does e-filing work? So EFS in, in, uh, is an acronym, but also e-filing. I will be referring mostly on e-filing. It provides legal profession with rudimentary online case file from which documents can be electronically filed with the courts or served the other parties. Again, the same way parties were serving each other or filing cases in ESCJ is the same way, but only done electronically. The electronic, the filing system is integrated with the CMRS. Now, I'll make a pause here and explain. CMRS, referred to case management and recording system, is an internal system for ESCJ, but it is connected to the electronic filing system, which is open now to the public. This is something we'll keep referring to so that there is a linkage between ESCJ and litigants and lawyers. E-filing system is external to ESCJ compared to CMRS, just like I have just said. These are the roles because it's also a role-based system. We have a claimant or applicant, respondent, amicus courier, intervener, but with the integration case management, we have the principal judge, the registrar and clerks who have access because as you are going to see in the next, with the next presenter, the workflow is made to the point that when one step is completed, before it goes to the next, ESCJ approves. So there is going to be a back and forth integration so that we know for sure, by the time a judge has put this case for hearing or for scheduling, it, everything has been done and adhered to. The functionalities, claimant, applicant, or advocate, lodges an application, reference a claim, Respondents reply to, 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 the, to the cases filed. All our parties attach all the documentation required. So this is where I will have to explain a little bit. It is mandatory for the users of this system to have clear photocopiers or scanners. As the registrar said, when we go completely digital, it has to be clear what you have scanned. 
integrity of the data is a role or is a functionality of both parties, the one who is filing, but also the one who is processing. Should the claimant, for example, scan a document of 100 pages and then forget a page somewhere, and then later on say something might have happened, we'll have to trace. This has very good logging system. We have to log and we see who started this process and what document was scanned. So this is something the litigants or our stakeholders have to understand. It is their responsibilities to have good connection, but also good devices for printing, for scanning, or for photocopying. Functionalities, the approval of all step by clots and registrar, just like I'd said in the slide before, there is this back and forth uh, interaction, because if something is not done as per the rules of the ESCJ, the clerk and the registrar, they can not approve it. They will just disallow it and return it to the initiator with the comment of this is what you're supposed to do. Our colleague who is coming next he will show that. Forms generation like affidavit of service, notification of hearing, so on and so forth. Among the forms generation, I would like to mention this. When we send, let's say for example, one party serves another, and then the other party receives and then says I, or decides to say, decide not to work on it, and then later on claim that I've never seen it. As soon as a document is sent to you, we get a notification. As soon as you open it, we get a notification. So this is a document which can be shown in court. Should you say you did not receive, it will show with the time stamp date and the name of the user who logged in. Then schedule a case for hearing through CMRS and send all the parties notifications. What do we expect from the stakeholders? Familiarize with the system, like the registrar said, ESCJ is here at your disposal to assist anytime needed. When the system is rolled out, litigants and advocates will lodge cases on their own of course, we'll be here to assist. This is not an event, it's a process which we have started. And a pilot project for now will be Tanzania and then we'll roll out to all the part, uh, partner states as well. We'll now have a few questions maybe later, then uh, part of the program, I still have a few minutes. I don't know whether I should uh, do the part of um, showing the username on logging or we just take in questions. I don't know, David, how you would suggest we go on. Uh, thank well, you. thank you very much. I know that was very, very nice uh, and very, very precise on what this system really is and how easy it's going to make things. Uh, well, you have some time, as you say. Um, I'm thinking we, we can go directly into the practical aspects of it. Actually, I think that is where the most questions will come in. How do I create a, an account? How do I say login? Uh, things like those. You've already spoken about other issues like uh, scanning. The copies must be clear. You know, issues like that. Uh, I think we can go to the practical part of it. Then we get some few questions from participants. Thank you. As per the program you sent, I will have up to 3.30, but uh, even if I, I use less time, maybe extra time will be with uh, our colleague Boniface because he has, he will be the one now doing the cases as we assist the background. So, but also leave more time maybe to, for questions. So I'll share my screen. I hope the screen is there. You're able to see now. Thank you. Now, I mentioned two things. We have e-filing system integrated with a case management system. If you look here, it's called East African Court of Justice Case Management and Recording System. Now, this is 
for ESCJ. What we expect the litigants to use is this. The e-filing system. We have to create credentials for members. When we make this open, this link will be accessible to the users. What will they do first? They will have to register. Just, I'm sure now members know that even to take part of this, they had to register. Now, you create a login, a username, mention your first name, last name, and email address. Very, very important. Of course, password and confirm. When you're done, you will click on register down here. I don't know whether you're able to see this bottom, this button at the bottom. Thank you. That you click on register. For the sake of time, when you log in and you will have created your, log, your login credentials, this is what you will see. This is as simple as that. Very simple, but this is only only for e-filers or applicants, not respondents. So it has to be clear. Res uh, litigants or their advocates, when we, pub when we make this link public, right now we're using a test environment, we'll put it on our website, we'll publish it, make sure even our social media, then users will have to log in, register for themselves, we will approve, then they will have to log in and proceed. For the part of creating a username and an account, this is where I will stop because the rest, my colleague will mention now how to go about claim, reference, reference on taxation, so on and so forth. So creating, as I log out, creating uh, credentials, it's very simple. We will share the link. You will see this. You will register, fill in the form, click on register, and then you're good to go. Hope this is clear. Now, for the part of the respondents, now this is where it's tricky. Respondents, most cases, I'm sure there is a, a legal uh, explanation to that. My colleagues can give more. Most of them are either the East African community or partner states, attorney generals. So those ones, how we're going to do it, we will create what we call a super user for example, East Africa Law Society will create one account, will give administrative rights, and then that person will be able to create other accounts. For example, in the East African, East African community, at the city's office, the council to the community, we have different lawyers. We'll create one super user, and then that super user will create other accounts. Let me do it practically. I'll try to go as slow as we can because it's just a beginning, an introduction. This is where we create them. As I said, this is for the East African Court of Justice. So I won't explain other, other, other logins you're seeing. Those ones I will not. So we we'll only concentrate on this. This is how we create a super user. We give it a name. We choose where they belong to. Is it attorney general's office? Is it the CTC? Is it a country? What is it? We, we mention the jurisdiction, which country, as you can see, the partner states are there. And the country, 
and all the addresses. When we finish that, it will populate in here, just like we did. Today's case, we will use, as I said, pilot project is in Tanzania. So this is what we created. All this information can be added, but this is not mandatory. These are the mandatory information. Now, after creating this as a team, remember I said, in the office of the council to the community, there are many lawyers. So we will create them as a team. In the edges office of Tanzania, we have many attorneys. So they will all belong to this team. The team called the Attorney General of the Republic of Tanzania. When we are done with this, as I said, it's a little bit complex for the respondents. We will create a user. So that user will be the one to give all the rights. This is the user, for example. I will create any user here. Okay. Give it a role. Okay. And then when we are done, you see two roles down here. These are all the roles we don't need to mention right now. But there is this role, state members admin and state members. This means if it is state members admin, it is the super user. So this user will create, will create other accounts. I will show you one we did for the edge of Tanzania. This one for testing purposes. This is the username. This is a dummy case because of course this is a uh, test environment. First name, last name registered on. This is when we started the first testing. Login credentials, this is the username. Email address, the, this was the last time it was logged in for testing purposes. And this is the role I mentioned, state members admin. And as you can see, they belong to the team of AG Tanzania. Now, when we are done with this, the admin, the administrator in full for the office of the Attorney General of Tanzania will come here at the link of the e-filing system. Again, I, rem I remind the members, two systems are integrated. E-filing system is like a child to the mother and here the mother is the case management and recording system, acronym CMRS. Where I was here is the CMRS, but these credentials will be shared to the lawyers, to the ages as respondents, and then they will log in here. This is the login for AG, the sorry. Make sure I didn't make any mistake. Yes, I made a mistake on typing. Sorry about that. So when they log in, things are different. It doesn't even look like the others. Why? Look here on this left column and the users. Remember, this is an administrator, the one who will be assigning roles for other state attorneys or principal attorneys, all the attorneys. You, he will create now users under, for example, this is himself or herself, but this is a user which was created with the role of just state attorney. I will show you how we do that. You register a user, login, the, the username, first name, last name. It is automatically connected to the Attorney General of the United Republic of Tanzania. 
as the team or the office because the administrator for the AG Tanzania is the one who logged in here. And then you put the last name, you will click next. Okay, maybe just for testing purposes. This will show you've already created the user successfully, but I don't want to allow it. But this is what happens. Automatically, the role assigned is state members and not state members at all. Then this user will be able to log in. I hope I make myself clear. So this is now the difference between an e-filer, who is that anybody who wants to file a case, and a respondent who is mostly of the different partner states. I believe this is where I will stop. Should there be questions, they can be either written down or shared on the, on the chat or the Q&A chat of this uh, video conference. Thank you very much. Over to you, David. Well, thank you very much. Uh... Anad, that was really technical for an advocate like myself. Uh, I find a lot of icons to click on here and there. And I feel like, oh, I might need more training or I might actually need to use this system and, and get used to it in a, uh, an everyday kind of, uh, you know, getting used to do these things online. It's, it's new, as you say. And uh, the earlier we get used to it, the better. So thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, I think in the future we will have actually physical sessions with advocates. And, and that is when it will be easier to explain these things to them. Uh, we've realized uh, recently that uh, people are getting tired of webinars somehow. And uh, this being a weekday is also difficult, but we will draw this out with yourselves. I know the, uh, the Office of the Registrar has these plans uh, to actually go to the advocates and train as many as possible. This is a very new and welcome idea. I have one question, oh, actually two. Uh, what will happen in a case where uh, the applicant is uh, a partner state? Uh, it's not, they are not the responders anymore, or the applicant is the SG of the ESC or in a case where it's partner state versus partner state. Um, another question is when you speak of pilot, it means this program will start, uh, Tanzania advocates will have access first or uh, what happens when you officially roll it out? Thank you very much. I think much. the chat section is also open, sorry. The chat section is open. We can have more questions raised uh, so that Arnold can uh, then respond to them and then towards the end of the session, we'll give an opportunity to advocates that are willing to ask questions live to, to actually raise them. Thank you. Anod, welcome before we go to Bonnie. Thank you very much. Two questions you asked. What happens if a partner states is an applicant now? Simple, they will register as e-filers. As you saw, it's very easy. We'll just have to fill in the username, the first name, last name, and the name and the email address. They are good to go. We'll just approve on our, on our end and they're good to go. I believe this is clear. The, that is actually easy. Yes, very easy. Actually, we sh we, the whole point of IT is to make life easier. The second question is, I'm sure the registrar will comment add more. When we wrote it out in Tanzania, the reason we are doing was we are in this pandemic. There is no way we can go around implementing this. As you saw, or even rightly say yourself, this kind of capacity building is not easy to do online. It's not. We, there is need for physical interaction. There is further assistance until it is completely done. We thought about starting with small, where, we, where the HQ, the headquarters of East African community is, or East African Court of Justice, 
in Tanzania, then we roll it out to the rest. For now, when they start, if there is a case, let's say, for example, a lawyer with ELS or PALU, those are physically located in Tanzania, or AG Tanzania, those ones, we can even start using this e-filing system when we roll it out. But if it involves another partner states, since we haven't yet rolled out the system in that country and trained lawyers, we will, it will be hard and we'll just do it the normal way via the sub-registries in the different partner states. Even that is part of electronic filing system, even though it is not as open as this e-filing will be. If the registrar maybe has something to add, he will maybe add and then we'll proceed. Thank you. Well, I think that is just what it is that will start with Tanzanians because they are closer to us. They can reach us at any time. But I'm sure also there are some participants here who are uh, IT survey that after this, they might want to try from wherever they are. So if you feel you want to file a matter and you want to try online, just let us know so that we, we keep tab on the system and help you to see if you can get through it. We will really encourage those who are able to do that. Thank you, Your Worship. I think this opens uh, the space up to more people, especially those that are now willing, you know, not being coerced, those that are willing to use this system to actually go ahead and use it, regardless of where they are in East Africa. So thank you for that. I guess now we can go to uh, the next presenter. You have question. Uh, he, he deals. You have question. Yes, on Arnold. The, uh, you have question on the Q and A. If you check the chat on Q and A, there are four questions there. Ah, I see. I see. Uh, the, one of them from Maud uh, Sean Elliot. Where do you save or store all this data? Uh, that's a little technical. There's another one from uh, Patrick Didier Nukuri. Um, I cannot see that one. I have them. I can see them. After the first one, I think there is a Nakili Fitzwanga. Is it possible that I create a user account for future access to the system, for example, in the next five years and not immediately? Wow. <laughs> then, uh, Patrick, again, more concretely, who is the admin for them? I, don't know, do you I want think to there was one that? more question from Patrick. I cannot see it. You know, I was answering some sometimes. Maybe it's part of what I answered. Ah, it says uh, I did not get the part on how the individual applicant can access the system. Yeah, like that. So one, he I needs already uh, a little him. explanation on that. I'd already answered him on uh, on the chat saying that, that is actually the section we are going into next. Yeah. Anu, do you want to answer Maud? Where do you save or store all these data? Thank you, Your Worship. Maud, for information, we have a data center at East African community. And uh, the future plan is to host it in the cloud. It's technical, it is answered and simple as that. If there is a follow up question, maybe it will come. And uh, Nakili's question of uh, to create user accounts for the future access system, for example, for the next five years. <laughs> um, as I said, when you create an account, we will have to approve. Then you have to be a real person first. So we will have to make sure it's not a, a bot, like technical word or a hacker, or because these systems are, can be hacked anytime. So we have to make sure you're a real person and you use it. We'll do follow up. I said it has uh, login details. It has log files. When we see accounts which are dormant, I believe we might not keep them. So if it's just for the future, we'll be here. You will be able to create it. Actually, it will be much more developed and improved. And last from Patrick, who is the admin for them? 
Yes, thank you. Uh, Patrick, the admin will be a person the AG's offices will give us. We cannot choose for them. Maybe they will look for somebody who is more into IT as an advocate, because, but this person has to be an advocate. This is something for sure. Because this person can also respond. For example, if it is a certain person versus the AG's office of a certain country, that person, there will be an advocate, a counsel who will represent the country. So that person will be either a state administrator as a role or just state user role. I don't know whether it was clear. Well, uh, thank you, Arnold. Arising from Nakili's question, uh, this is just a follow up. Yes. Will it be possible to create an account? It stays dormant. If, for example, I'm an advocate, I have a client, I have a case, I create an account, I handle this matter. Say two years down the line, this matter is completed, my account goes dormant. Then five years down the line, I get another case. Uh, probably you deactivated this particular account. I will be allowed to create another one. Uh, is that right? Thank you. That's a very good point, a very good question. It, that is a different case. Because you have been active, maybe there is a reason. Because, you know, the reason we, we don't keep such dormant accounts, first of all, they, they will create space in the wrong run, but also they can be used as backdoors or as credentials to hack into the system. There are many ways which can, those accounts can be used maliciously. They might appear or look genuine, but since they've been dormant, somebody has been trying to hack into the system and sees an account, maybe easy to set up, easy password, maybe on a computer with the, with the lots of viruses and all. There are many ways it can be used. So if you have, we will not just deactivate, just like normal email, like office emails. I'm sure most of the times, every three months or six months, you're reminded. That's one of the ways we make sure it is still active. We ask you to change the password, you don't. For a second time, we don't. The account will be blocked. It means it's either dormant, you no longer use it, or any other reason. So it will be in the same way. Well, thank you, Anand. As we move to uh, the next phase of uh, this session, uh, I think I've learned something that I would advise law schools. Uh, it's better to introduce law with IT because uh, this is going to be the future, I guess, for, for most advocates, you need these skills. Uh, so I would like to welcome Mr. Boniface Ogoti. Uh, he deals with more of the law part and uh, he will be taking us through the next session. Welcome, Boniface. Uh, thank you, David. Uh, good afternoon again. I think my role here will be to take you through the practical session on uh, how we lodge uh, cases electronically. And uh, maybe to let you know that uh, this, uh, I know that Zari has indicated that the system was uh, launched some years back. And we have been doing this thing uh, internally. We had not opened it up to the uh, litigants outside. So what has been happening is that uh, you have been filing cases and what we have been doing internally here is that we have been scanning those documents and entering the data into this system and moving the file around the registry, managing the case electronically, but uh, in the background. So the litigants outside were not knowing that uh, we were using this system internally. But now we have opened it. We want to open it up to the litigants so that what we were doing of scanning cases it is litigants who will be uh, sitting on their computers typing their pleadings and sending them to the registry we approve the case and it moves the normal life cycle of a case within the system but elect electronically so maybe to understand the life cycle of a case because for you to understand how the system works, then it is better to, to know how the two cases or three cases in the first instance division, uh, the process that it takes within the court up to its uh, disposition. 
So I'll just uh, share uh, a chart uh, to show uh, how the case moves around. Uh, let me share my screen. I don't know if you are able to see. Well, not yet. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay. So this is uh, the way we have uh, two types of cases in the first subdivision plus uh, applications. So those are the main cases that are handled in the first instance division. And with this session, I think we shall start our presentation. Uh, in this session, we shall do a presentation on cases in the first instance division, because that is the, the, the case flow that we have finished on the system, but we are working on the appellate division and we shall open it up also soon. So under the treaty, we have cases brought by way of statement of reference. I know in the national uh, systems, we do it by way of plaint or a, or a claim. But here we, they are brought by way of statement of reference or a claim. A claim is dispute between the community and its employees. A reference can be brought under Article 28 where a partner state sues a partner state or an organ of the community. Under Article 29 where the Secretary General can sue a partner state. And under Article 30 where we have legal and nat natural persons suing. So the first document you present in the court is that a statement of reference or a statement of claim. Then the registry will receive that case, approve it, process it, approve, and, and give you back your copies. Then you serve the respondent. Once you serve the respondent, the respondent will file either a response if it is a, uh, it is a reference or a defense if it's a, a statement of claim where we have dispute between the community and its employees. So again, when the respondent does that, files the documents, the registry again processes the document. Uh, once it is processed, it is given back to the respondent and the respondent will serve the applicant. The applicant will have a, a right of a rejoinder, that is a reply to the response, or, or the claimant will do a reply to the defense. So those are the three documents that are filed and pleadings close. So once pleadings close, you cannot file any other document unless with the leave of the court. So the, when the pleadings close, the file moves to the a principal judge. The principal judge will now look at the file and decide whether it will go for pre-trial conference. So a pre-trial conference will be held here. When a pre-trial conference is held, uh, that is where we prepare on our, uh, how a he hearing will be conducted. You can see the arrows here. One may choose to go straight to legal arguments. Another one may choose to go the way of oral evidence or affidavit evidence. So if it is oral evidence, then we will go to oral hearing of evidence before we go to oral hearing of uh, legal arguments. After oral hearing of legal arguments is done, then a judgment is delivered. So the judgment will be delivered. You can either apply for review or go for an appeal. So that is the life cycle of a case within the first start division. And this is what now the this is now what is being done electronically. So that you file the case electronically, it is processed electronically. You respond electronically, it is processed electronically. You rejoin electronically, it is processed electronically. Judges do the scheduling conference. They will have the case in the system. They will be not, they'll not be having the, the paper files because the case is already in the system. So they do the scheduling conference. Uh, evidence that is uh, uh, by affidavit, can also be scanned and put in the, in the system. Le legal arguments can be done written, then oral highlights, and that is the life cycle of a case within the court. So this is what I'm going to take you through uh, practically so that uh, we see how, how, how it works. Now, uh, Having explained that, I will now uh, share the screen on uh, the case management system.
sorry, I'm uh, trying to open, but uh, So we have the e-filer. Are you able to see my screen now? You have shared the wrong one. Kindly share only the one where you opened case management. This is yes, where I have, you I have opened the two. We have case management and we have e-filer. No, we we are now seeing uh, Teams. Seeing your calendar. We're seeing Teams on calendar. Kindly okay. stop sharing and then share again. You will choose. Yes. You can see it. You can now see it. Eh? Yes, that's great. Okay. So we have, uh, I have opened two pages. We have one that is uh, the case management system e filing. And we have the case management recording system. This is the now the one that is managed by the registry. So as Arnold was explaining, there are two environments. The first environment is where the litigants access the case management system. Uh, they have their e-filing accounts. And there is another environment where now the registry, the court itself, is managing the case internally. So I will log out and log in as an e-filer. Okay. So, sorry. So here I am able to create the cases that I was talking about. You can see the bar here. We have a claim, we have a reference, we have a reference on taxation, we have an appeal, advisory opinion, arbitration, case stated, intellectual application. So these others, we shall not go through it. We shall just choose a simple case that is a reference, which are uh, uh, the mostly filed cases in this court. And uh, we assume that I'm a person who is logging, who is filing the case. So having logged onto the system as a litigant or a lawyer, I'll just click a reference. Kindly change your role from administrator to e-filer, please. Okay. Okay, then I'll begin a reference. So the way the system was developed, is that we went into our rules and uh, since our rules do not have the form itself but we designed a form that will, will, will take into account what is required of a statement of reference. So we have the general provision, the, the general field. So we have the general field where you have uh, uh, some fields in red. This red means that those are mandatory like the division where the matter is, the case, where the case originates, and uh, we have also case number. The case number is automatically generated. As of now, what happens is that you come to the registry, you file a case, we go into our, our register, give you a number of that case uh, physically. But in this system, once I, I, I complete the case, a number will be generated uh, automatically. So there's no need of me uh, giving a number here in the registry, or if you're filing it in, in uh, any other part of EAC, like Nairobi, Kampala, the system will generate the number uh, automatically. So uh, the date also here appears to be generated automatically. And now I'll be creating, I'll go to the next field. After general, pro, uh, general field, I'll go to the next field that is parties. So parties where you are asking whether the uh, applicant is the attorney general, or a, a person, I'll add a party. Here we can see we have an applicant. 
we have a respondent. So you are able to add even more than one applicant. You are able to add even more than one respondent. So this is how it works. I'll add a party. I'll choose the party to be a person, a resident in East African com community. I select, I put the name of the, of the person, maybe call him a litigant. Uh, last name, maybe a Kenya and click next. Litigant Kenya is not there uh, because the system also ha has, uh, it saves participants in the system. So when you uh, initially uh, uh, start a, a case and you put a name there, then that, that name will be saved in the system and it can be used by you yourself any other time or any other party who comes in, files any other advocate, advocate who wants to file a case. So I'll click next and it will prompt me to fill in the details. So I'll say the litigant maybe is a, a, a from Tanzania. The first name is a litigant. Second name is Kenya. So I, I, I may not put in all these details because they are not mandatory and it may allow me to move on, but let me just try putting in the, we say is a Tanzanian, okay. These are the, this is the address of the person who is uh, the applicant. So all the details of the applicant will be put in here. So the street, uh, we can say Da, we can say here Da, Dar es Salaam. Okay. Then email, you can see it is re in, in red, it, it is mandatory. We have to put the email of that person because now that we are going electronic, email is very crucial. You cannot move without an email. So anyone who comes to the uh, to file uh, the matter in uh, electronically must have an email address. Okay, so when you click next, you can see up here, the applicant has already been populated. One person is there. So if I wanted to add a second one, I will still click add and it would add a second applicant. So I think that is understandable. I don't need to add another second applicant because of, of time. Then for the respondent, you can still do because most references are filed against uh, the, a, a partner state or an institution of the community. So we can say the government, we assume maybe the government of Tanzania and we, we select the jurisdiction, it is Tanzania. We search whether the, the Attorney General of Tanzania already exists, we select. We have to put city, it is red, in red, it is mandatory. So email, I can still use my email. Okay, you click next. So all this is something that will be the, the, the advocate will be doing. So you can see the applicant has been populated. The respondent, we have the Attorney General of the United Republic of Tanzania. We have filled in the details. So here advocates, advocates are advocates representing either. Advocate representing the uh, applicant or advocate representing the respondent. So we can add an advocate, can choose their advocates. We say done. I'm not using the correct uh, names, I'm just using any prototype. So, does not exist. I have to put in the details. Email is mandatory. And I have to choose that that advocate represents either applicant or respondent. So you can say it is the advocate for the applicant, who is a litigant Kenya. Okay. 
and once I finish filling in the details, I've not filled in the others because they are not, not mandatory. But when you as an advocate, you are feeling you need to put in so that we can be able to identify the party that is being sued or the party that is being, that is sued. So we click next. So an advocate has been populated. I can still do so for the next, uh, for, the, for the respondent. The advocate that I have added for now is for the applicant. But uh, since you have under, understood that, I can move to the next step. So we have finished the part of parties. So the next part is the statement of facts or question. So this one also is the content of a statement of reference as provided under the rules. This is what should be in a statement of reference. So we need to put in statement of facts or question. So this one, you can type it in. You can see in this field, you can type anything. Okay. Type anything there. Then you can go to the next field that is statement of law. You can type anything there. Then order sort. You type there in that field. So all this will be done by the litigant or the advocate representing him who is lodging the, the statement of reference. And this is the statement of reference that we are preparing. So uh, under our rules, you can attach evidence or you can also do an affidavit and attach it as, as a part of the statement of reference. So uh, the statement of reference, the fields also provide an option for attaching attaching a document. So you can see here we have upload, upload a file. So you can attach a document to this. You can have it maybe on a flash or it is on your desktop, you can choose. Uh, on a desktop, I can choose maybe this uh, is a notice. Open. And you see it has, a, it, it has a, a attached successfully, it is uploaded. So you close, the document appears here. You can even open it and see uh, what has been uh, has been attached. You see, this is what I've attached to that document. So you can close it uh, and close that window. You can go back, check what you have you have typed in the, in those fields is okay. Confirm everything. Go back up to the parties, the general fields, confirm, then you click next. Once you click on the next, it will bring you now the document that you have been working because you have just been filling in fields, but now it will show you the document itself. So you see, we have created a statement of reference. This is how it appears. Litigant who is a litigant Kenya, the applicant. We have the Attorney General of the United Republic of Tanzania, reference. The applicant's address is, is there, what we've typed there, Dar es Salaam region and all that. Respondent's address is also there. Boni, that document view, I'm not seeing anything. Are you seeing anything? I'm only seeing document view, but it's blank. It's blank. On my side, I'm seeing. It shows document view, nothing. Okay. Let me see. Let me try and open it again. Yes, now it has come. It has come. Now again, it has gone back to blank. Aha. Oh, no. uh -huh. Can you see it now? Not yet. Yeah, Bonnie, just wait a bit. It will take some time to roll to load. Oh, okay. I've already clicked next. It has it has moved to the next uh, level. But the can you see the screen now? Yes. 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 Sorry for that. We shall see another. I shall re reach another document and we see how it appears. Uh, so once you complete, you click next and the file will move from your tree and go to the court clerk. So you see here, you under your 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 screen on your screen, you see that it's showing a document in progress. I have logged in as a an e-filer. I have been creating more uh, many cases before. That's why you see all these other cases. But for now, this is, I think, my eighth case that I've created. You can see here we have litigant Kenya and one other as the Attorney General of, of uh, the United Republic of Tanzania. 
So me as a lawyer who has filed the case, I know that this case has gone to the registry. So what remains now is for me to wait and see whether it will be approved by the registry. So I'll now log in as the, as the court clerk in the uh, case management system. Now I'll, I'll leave the e-filing environment. That's why we, expect, we explained to you that there are two different environments. This is an, the environment of the e-filer. You have logged in from wherever you are and uh, you have filed a case. Now the court clerk and the registrar and the principal judge, those ones log in from the different environment that is the case management system because they are ma managing the case uh, internally. So I'll go to that window of uh, uh, case management and log in as a, as a, as a court clerk. So as a court clerk, I am able to see the case here. There's a new case that has come in. That is litigant Kenya and one other, I don't know why it has put one other, that's an error. Litigant Kenya versus the Attorney General of the Republic of Tanzania. I click on that case. As a court clerk in the registry, I'll be able to see what type of case it is, who are the parties, what is there in the statement of uh, facts, what is there in the statement of law, what are the orders sought and the attachments. So if you have scanned something that is not clear here and attach it to this document, I will be able to maybe refuse, uh, uh, refuse to receive the document, reject the document and send it back to you at that stage. But the registrar can also do, to do the same because once I finish this process, it will go to the registrar. So I can also preview the case. So I, I think at this stage, you can see whether that document viewer will show. It's loading, we'll let you know. Wait a bit, don't click next. Okay. But maybe just to point out here for the participant that what Bon is showing you now is something, it's not you who will be doing, this is something which will be happening in the background by the court staff. So you have already filed your matter, you are waiting for a response for us. So this process here is what, what us will be doing here. Then he will want to lead us when you come in again. Has it come? Not I yet. haven't seen it. Mm. Has it maybe opened somewhere else? It has opened in PDF somewhere else, I think. PDF. Okay. Yes. So, so share us that PDF. Okay. So I stop sharing stop this sharing. and share. Yeah, share, stop sharing, share now that PDF. That PDF, okay. Yes. Yes, can now it? I can see it. Yes, so this is how the document appears. And uh, that is the purpose of the document viewer because initially we were seeing, we are, were just seeing fields. But now you can see the what we were typing in those fields. You can see the, the reference number has already been generated. Uh, this is automatically generated by the system. And like those reference numbers that we give you at the registry here. You can see the applicant that we typed in, the attorney general that we typed in, and the addresses. Okay, City of Dar es Salaam. We, have, we can see the concise statement of facts, uh, the concise statement of law, and order sought. It is dated, drawn by Dan Advocate, lodged in the registry on 22nd October, drawn and filed by Boniface to be served upon, that one should appear, upon the Attorney, Attorney General of, of Tanzania. So this document, you can also print it and, and uh, have uh, uh, a hard copy if you want to. So after viewing this document and I, I, I assert, ascertain that it is in order, it complies with our rules. Uh, maybe someone, didn't, uh, another person would have not typed the, 
concise statement or put the statement in paragraphs and all that, because our rules provide that it has, they have to be in paragraphs. So once I've viewed the documents, I'll close that document. Share the screen again. So I have viewed the document. After viewing the document, I now need to move forward as a court clerk. I'm working on this. I've confirmed the document is okay. I just need to click next. And the file will have moved from my tray and it will go to the registrar. So I'll need to log in as the registrar. And the registrar's role now is to, to approve to approve the, the case. Body, before you move, can you, oh, yes, okay, that's fine. Can you can you go back no, as ready as as a user? As, no, no, go back as a court clerk. Mm -hmm. Go back as a court clerk. Yes. Still says the review file. Yes, that's what I wanted us to fix. Because for okay. us, it's, yeah, there, there. Approve yeah, it from okay. Next. Send it to registrar. Okay. Yeah, so it has moved from the court clerk's tray and it has gone to the registrar. So the registrar will now open his tray. Wherever he is, he may be in Nairobi, he may be in, uh, in Kampala, he'll open his tray and he'll find a new case has come in. So the case that we have created is Litigant Kenya versus the Attorney General of the Republic of Tanzania, United Republic of Tanzania. Because for us, it is loading slowly. All right. Now it's okay. We are there. It's okay. So the registrar will click on the case to approve the case and send it back to the court clerk to send it to the uh, litigant or the advocate who has filed it. So he'll click on the case. And all this that is happening, when, wherever, when the registrar is away, this notification is also sent to his uh, email or even on phone. So the system is programmed in such a way that it will notify him on his phone, on email, and he'll be able to know that something has, has been lodged in the registry. So the registrar will also go through the same process, check the fields, what this case is all about, the attachments, and uh, he'll click next. So it, it will prompt him either to reject or approve the case. So you see this is in red. If he clicks next, it will not move to the next step. So he has to click either of these uh, icons. So when he rejects, the, the, the case will be sent back to the person who files, who filed the case with the reasons why it has been rejected. But for now, we can approve it. We can say it complies with the, with the rules. and click next. So it will again pro prompt him and uh, say that, uh, remember once you click the next button, the current task will be finished and next task generated and sent to the next participant for of the process. So if he had done something wrong, he can still go back. If he has remembered something that uh, he needed to, to check, he can still go back. But now we, we assume everything is okay. We click next. So send a decision, send the decision. And the, the file has now moved from the tray of the registrar. If you look at this document, this uh, uh, list, you will realize that that case that was in the registrar's tray has now disappeared. It is not no longer the registrar. We don't see it yet. Okay. Have you clicked? Okay. Now we can see it. Now we can see. So if you look at this list, you will realize that the case has disappeared. The case that we were dealing with was a, a, a reference a reference number, so and so, and the, it was litig litigant Kenya versus Attorney General of Tanz Tanzania. It is no longer in the registrar's tree. So this case has gone to the clerk again. According to our, our processes, once the clerk sends it to the registrar, 
registrar approves, it goes back to the court clerk to prepare a notification to be sent to the applicant. So uh, you need to change the role to that of the uh, court clerk. Okay, so you can see in the court clerks, I hope it has come. It's loading. So in the court clerks, yes, now we can see it. In the court clerks tray, you can see the, the file that is in bold here. It means this file has now come back from the registrar and uh, the court clerk has a, a function to perform here. It says send the no send notice. So when you file a case in the in the, in, in the ESCJ, you, you, you file the document, we stamp them, and we give you a notification. In, in national court, I think it's called summons notification to notify the other party that uh, a case has been lodged, uh, filed in the registry against them. So the court clerk will click on that. Here is the notification. Not yet. You can share the, yes, now we can see the preview form. Go ahead. Yes, the notification. This, uh, the person who is it is to be served on has already been automatically generated. It is the Attorney General of the United Republic of Tanzania. The address is there. Then any document to be attached, you can attach here. If it is a, the statement of reference that itself that you had printed, you can also attach it as, as an attachment and you click next. You need to put the date, which is mandatory. We had not put that. So we put the date and uh, Click next. There was a document viewer. I can share you, with you the document viewer so that you see the notification. We can see it. Can see it. Okay, so this is the notification that goes with the statement of reference. You are here by notifying that the above claimant has instituted a reference against you. You, a copy of it is annexed here too. You are required to file a defense within 45 days from the day of service here of in default where of the claim will be had determined in your absence. So that is the notification. Once you view it, you can also print it out and uh, have a hard copy. But once you view it, you can close. Then you move on. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay, so you assume that now we have already seen the, doc the, the document. We have verified that it is okay. This is the court clerk doing this. Then he clicks next. Next. Then it will prompt him to send the notifications, affidavit, and response. Okay. Mm -hmm. Send notification. So the, 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 the file will remain in the tray of uh, the court clerk. And the documents have gone to the applicant because once the applicant files the case, it is him who is supposed to file the, who is supposed to serve the reference and the notification. Maybe I need to refresh. Okay. It's not it here. I go in progress. As an e-filer, I can see my file here. I go to case file. So the notifications are already with me. I am the e-filer who filed that case in the court. And uh, I can see my claim here. Then there's a notification here that I need to serve on the respondent. 
So I'll click on it. And here you can see there is Slowly. an icon. Okay, now you can see. Just to give it like three, four seconds latency. Okay, before I talk. <laughs> so now we can see the, the serve icon, serve notification. So me, the applicant, I know the email address or the, the, the respondent, the Attorney General of the United Republic of Tanzania is already in the system. And as Arnold had explained earlier, what we shall do when we, we are op opening up this thing to the uh, litigants is that we shall have all the central uh, addresses or the ad admin, admin, administrator's accounts of the attorneys general so that uh, when any person uh, files a case against the attorney general of the Republic of Tanzania, they are, sub they are able to see that uh, a case has been filed against them in their entry. So whenever any case is served on them, they'll be served uh, electronically and they'll have someone who is always on that account who should be able to see those, those uh, notifications and who will also be notified on his uh, uh, email and uh, phone, whatever the case will be. So in this particular case, when I click the button serve notice notification, then that case will automatically go to the attorney general of that partner state. In this particular case is the partner state of Tanzania. A partner state of Tanzania who will be served with the notifi notification. So once I click, are you sure you want to serve the document? So I'll say yes. And I click yes. Click next. The notification has been served. And you can see here under pleadings, we have a plus two, meaning that there is also an affidavit of service that has been automatically been generated. Not yet. Right? Okay. There it's there. Yeah. Under pleadings you will realize that there's a plus two here. It means a new document has been automatically generated that I didn't generate as an applicant. And I click on it, I'll see there is affidavit of service. So this affidavit of service, this one that is automatically generated, immediately the document is sent. Not yet. And, yes, and, now there, and, and there is another one that will be generated once that respondent opens the document on the other side. So this, affidavits are automatically generated. So having served the document, what does the applicant do? The applicant will close his, uh, uh, whatever, uh, his web page and wait for a, a response from the respondent. So we now want to act as respondents in this particular e-filing process. So I'll close this account and open another account as the, the respondent. So we assume now that I'm the Attorney General of Tanzania. So the Attorney General of Tanzania will open his tray. Okay, the reason why you are seeing many cases here, we have been doing these tests for some time. So the Attorney General has been receiving other cases. Now they are our, our latest case is this one, litigant, Ken, litigant versus the Attorney General of uh, versus the Attorney General of Tanzania. So the litigant of versus the Attorney General of Tanzania I will open this case as the AG or the, the administrator. And the reason why we have uh, an administrator in AG's chambers, in, in many cases we see that uh, the attorney general's chambers has many attorneys and we want a central person who will receive the case and assign it to whoever attorney is in that chamber. That's why Arnold was saying that we shall have an, administra an, 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 an administrator in that attorney general uh, chambers who will be able to do this. He called it, uh, is it the principal, what? I know there's a, a, a name you use. Is it the principal? Super user. Super, super user, yes. So the super user will be able to assign that file to whoever he has an account in that office. So in this particular case, maybe it is, uh, the file has been assigned to whoever is uh, uh, supposed to deal with it. He'll be able to look at the file 
go to case file, open the statement of reference, read it, what it is all about, okay, and close. Then he'll be able to go to pleadings and slowly, add. Slowly. All right. Yeah, you can go ahead. You can open the affidavit so that now they can see. Uh, okay. Is it there? Yes. Okay, this is now the affidavit of service. Hi, Boniface, the claimant in case number that, served the respondent, the Attorney General of the United Republic of Tanzania, in reference number that, the Attorney General of the United Republic of Tanzania, in case number that, at this time. You can see October 22nd, 6.03 a.m. I think this is the time of the system, but it was not 6.03 a.m. But it, the system will be programmed in such a way that it gives the time when the person has received the, the notification. So this is the, the affidavit of now, service. That, that time is for where the server is right now, because it is a test environment is not yet uh, in Arusha. So it is uh, European time, not, but it is accurate. Okay. So we, we go back to Okay, we close the affidavit. So uh, the respondent has now seen the claim, the re reference and the notification. So what he will do is just uh, add a pleading. The pleading that the respondent is, is going to add is the response, the respondent's response to the reference. So he can just go to this uh, form type, choose the document that he wants to add. Here it is the respondent's response to the reference. Then the document that it is related to, it is re responding to the statement of reference. Then he clicks next. And next. Then he can fill in the field. It is supposed to be served upon the applicant. See? So the address comes there. You can fill in whatever response he wants to the, to the reference. You can attach to the response an affidavit, any document that he wants to attach by clicking on upload as we did in the case of the statement of reference. Once he finishes, because the general provisions are also, uh, we don't have a red that is pending are completed. So he'll just click next, confirm whether everything that he has typed there is okay. Can you click on service? Service. Existing participant I chose there, but it brought something different. Show it because it's not coming yet. Uh, go back to service, please. It hasn't come yet. Yes, so you can remove it. It will come automatically later on its own. Okay. How do I remove it? Okay, cancel that. Okay, don't, just close, don't save, and then we do it. Close both. Close, even close that one. Yes, we do it. Just add, yes. We leave it. We leave it that way, but we need to put an email address here. Hold on a second. It hasn't come to our side yet. Okay. If you click next, will it uh, accept? No, I've seen a field that is in red here. 
if I will click next, it will not go because it is not filled in. So I've just put my email address there. Then uh, I type in the, the pleadings. Attachment you can attach. Then we click next. Good. So the, the, the response has been filed. And uh, as you can see in the pleadings, I, I, the respondent's response has been populated. So when that happens, it means the file, the, the document has gone to the registry. So the, the court clerk will also be, will, will now open, we now go back to the registry and uh, as a court clerk, I'll open the case. You can see the respondent's response is there. Then I'll approve the case, click next. Slowly. Okay. I know they don't think this is where Click next. What does it show? Pardon me? If you click next, what does it show? It don't says close, close pleadings. I, I think it should, I should not be don't going there. Don't close. I don't close. No, no, don't click on close pleading. If you click next, no, that's wrong. Close that one. That's wrong. Okay. Yeah. That's what I wanted to confirm. The folder called pleadings I think for it, review. It should be pleadings for review. Yeah. So as a court clerk, I'll re response, open it. I can see what, what it is all about. We don't I'll see click it. next. We don't see it. Okay, now we can see. Yeah. So the court clerk will verify whether the document is in order. And uh, at this stage, he'll also click next. He will be able to see the document viewer. I think that when we went through, I don't need to open for you the document view again. I just click next. And the status here, he needs to approve the case. You realize that uh, in the first instance, it was the registrar approving the main case. But when it comes to the response, the court clerk is able to approve and it will move from his tray. So the, the response has moved from the court clerk's tray and gone back to the Attorney General of the Republic of Tanzania for the purpose of serving on the uh, applicant. So the Attorney General of the Republic of Tanzania will go to doesn't seem to be there. So it is the same process because I'm seeing time is going. It is the same process. The Attorney General of the Republic of Tanzania will do the same thing. We'll serve the applicant. Let me log out and log in as the Attorney General of the Republic of Tanzania. I think that's what is creating. This doesn't seem to be to have been dispatched. Yes, not yet. You will have to go back to incoming the cases case. anywhere to see your case. Or in uh -huh. progress, or down to in progress, you see your case under case file. Okay, let me go back to the Attorney General. So this is the Attorney General of the Republic of Tanzania. Slowly, slowly. Yes, so check under in progress. 
Yes. Go to the case itself. Huh? Yes. Then go to case okay. five. Then I'll see the pending for. To be, to be served, to be. yes. So the Attorney General of the Republic of Tanzania will serve the pleading. Are you sure you want to serve the pleading? Yes. Next. Yes, so the, the file, the case has been served upon the uh, applicant. So again, the applicant will have to log on to the system. He'll go to in progress, open the case, and uh, go to case file. So the pleadings here, he can see the state, the, the response. So the, the applicant will also do the same thing, open the response, can read whatever is in the response. can open the document itself. So this is the second document that we had in the, uh, the case flow that I was showing you. So he can click next and also add a pleading. So he'll be adding a reply. Applicants reply to the, applicants reply to the response, okay? It is related to which document? It is related to respondent's response. And it is dated today. Then he'll click next. Uh, he can type in the pleadings. He can attach the document he wants to attach. The general provisions, we check everything is done. So he clicks next. He needs to put in his email address again. Yeah, then next, can, uh, he can upload and an, an annex any document, next. So, the, state, the applicant's reply to the response has been filed. So who is the next uh, uh, actor? It will be the court clerk. So we shall, Close this, go to case management, change our role to that of a court clerk. It is already there. Refresh. We and, are not uh, slowly. Can you see now? It's coming. Okay, we are there now. Okay, so this is the court clerk. He goes to his tray, can uh, review pleadings. Tasks. So he opens the file, he can see all the documents are there. We have uh, here, we have pleadings, applicants reply to the response, respondents response to the reference, then we have a notification down here. And down here, we have also all the documents, the reference, the notification, respondents, response, respondents, uh, uh, applicants reply to the response. So the court clerk is now able to conclude the process because the first three documents that we talked about, the pleadings, they, are, they have now concluded in exchanging those documents. So when he clicks next, it will prompt him to close the pleadings. So the court clerk will close the pleadings. And what happens next? It is ready to ask. To... Okay. okay. So what happens next is once he clicks, clicks the close pleadings and click next, then it will prompt him to, to, to send the file hmm? to the uh, 
to the judges for assignment, to the principal judge to assign the judges. So the file has now matured for pre-trial conference, ready to assign judges. So I'll just send the file as a court clerk, I'll send the file to the judges. So what has happened now is that the file has moved from the registry and it has gone to the principal judge. What is the role of the principal judge? The role of the principal judge is to look at the file, whether it is complete and uh, is ready for a pre-trial conference. So the principal judge, we shall, we shall now open, uh, change our role to that of the principal judge. Uh, Bonnie? Yes. Before we go there, I think yes. some of the participants, maybe it's their first time to interact with this, and we have gone so far, they will have forgotten what we started. I think what was important was to show them how they can file a reference. Yes. We went ahead, we showed them what happens in the background where they're not seeing until they receive the notification which they serve. Then yes. again, things that happen in the background that they don't see until they receive the response. Maybe I think if we load them also with too much information, we may end up not achieving much. Yes. Because now, I mean, you see like we are going to what the principal does judge. They, they, they really don't care what it does. It's not their business. So maybe we could leave it here and open it up for questions. I'm sure they'll have questions to, for them to understand the system. Otherwise we'll be going into too much details that will not really achieve what we want. In fact, this was the stage that I was just concluding with where the judges are as assigned and the matter goes back to the registrar and we stop there. Okay. So assigned judges is now the, the principal judge has the file is uh, he or she is able to assign to uh, judges for, for review. So he'll just choose the judges that is assigning the case. Save. The first judge has been assigned, the principal judge. He'll again assign another judge. Save. So that is the how it works so once the principal judge does that assigns the judges then the file will go to the registrar for fixing of a date for scheduling conference so basically that is how it works uh, if i go back to the to the chart that we we started with you will see where we have reached okay So that is the first instance division. We have exchanged the first. Can you see the chart? No, I can't see it. I'm just seeing a scan document which is about to be opened. Okay. Stop sharing and share again. Okay. Yes, now it is there. <laughs> it is there. So what we, we have done, we have gone through these first three documents. The reference, the response, the re reply, and the file has gone to, to the judge for scheduling conference. So the next steps are also the same on the system. It is all done electronically. The filing of written submissions, the hearing is where now the judge will carry his, his or her laptop to the courtroom and will be using, uh, going through the system instead of carry, carrying the hard copy files until the delivery of judgment. So that is it, what I have for the presentation on uh, uh, how the do, uh, practical session on how the system works on filing and exchange of documents. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Boniface. I think that was uh, quite refreshing. It's, it, it was a lot, but it was really good content. And if you are keen as an advocate, you would have learned about the process, you know, the entire process of filing a case at the East African Court of Justice, even now with the physical files. You'd have learned that you have to prepare this file. Uh, you have to lodge it at the registry. It has to be approved or rejected. It has to be brought back to you if rejected. You have to act on it. Then you have to serve. 
you know, the back and forth that will, you will do and it will take a lot of time is now automated. You are going to do it online using the system. And uh, Boniface has graciously gone to the extent of showing us what happens at the background. So while we file our matter, we know what he's going to do. We know what the registrar is going to do. Uh, we know what is expected of the other side, that is the respondent. So this has been quite uh, an opening up session. It has shown a lot about the procedures uh, at the East African Court of Justice. Even without reading the rules, you can actually see I'm required to do one, two, three, four, and the other party is required to do one, two, three, four. Now I'm going to open up this session for questions. I know we are running out of time, but uh, uh, I will open the session up for questions. We're going to allow typed questions to be responded to, as well as give you an opportunity if you would like to speak, uh, to actually voice them up. Uh, but first, I will go first. Uh, I have just two or three questions. Um, on, on the statement of facts, I don't know how long it should be, whether I should just copy paste my, whatever I've typed as a reference, into the statement of facts and the statement of law, or I just have to do a summary of whatever it is uh, that uh, my reference is about. So how long should that be? Should it be a summary of my claim or my reference? Or can I just bring the entire, my entire case and just copy paste it there? Uh, and then um, attachments. Uh, I think I had the same question as uh, Wani Santino. When Santino Jada raised a question on uh, what if the attachments that you adding there are not documents but videos, or they uh, they are in another form that is not in document form, uh, what then should I do? Uh, you've addressed my question on rejected documents. What happens when something is rejected? Uh, then the document viewer is it only visible to you as uh, the clerk receiving or can the advocate uh, doing this also have that summary? I've seen the system generates an automatic summary. Is it visible to me as the advocate or is it just you as the court clerk? I think I leave this to other lawyers to ask questions and for you to be able to respond. Uh, well, I think I have asked Wani Santino Jada's question. I do not see any others. There were some few hands up. Uh, let me see if I can give you an opportunity. Uh, there was uh, Joseph. I don't know whether Joseph has left the meeting. Rukezi Aime. Rukezi, if you, if you can hear me, I've allowed you to talk. So if you can raise your question directly, just unmute and go ahead. Uh, thank you. Then I'd like to know if the file is rejected. We then get the, another chance to for any other reason uh, to reject the file, if we can correct this, uh, the reason of being rejected, if we, we do have another chance uh, to post again the file, that was my only question. Uh, well, thank you, Rukezi. I do not see any other questions, so I'll uh, let our presenters and experts respond. Bonnie, please go ahead. Okay, uh, I think the first question was about uh, whether you should copy and paste the entire case. And uh, uh, according to our rules, you just need to put in your, uh, is it a grounds of the reference, statement of facts, and, and you need to be concise. So the system allows you to put anything there. And in our court, I, I don't think we have any limit. I have seen uh, recently, uh, is it uh, Mabirizi uh, putting in a very big document? So I think the system allows that, but it is good for you to just uh, put in uh, the statement, the, the facts are not put in evidence. So 
all those other things will be left for evidence, but uh, it should be uh, concise. Uh, then we have the issue of attachments. Attachments which are not documents. I think again, that is technical. The uh, Arnold may, may answer that, but uh, I believe if it is a video, it can be attached as a video, unless Arnold can uh, uh, chip in and, and. Thank you. I had lost connection. I did not get the question. If you can be kind enough to repeat the question for me. Maybe let me take it. I think a video is evidence. The pleadings are supposed to contain facts. So I think at that point, you can just indicate a video evidence will be presented at the hearing. Because otherwise then you'll be putting all the evidence on your pleadings, which is not, uh, which is not allowed. So you can just indicate there, because you said you're gonna touch documents, but now which are not evidence, documents which are facts. I mean, which are not, uh, which are not evidence. And so you can just indicate there, video evidence shall be produced during the hearing. There was the but question again, on the... Uh, if I may chip in there. Anand, is it possible to attach a file that is a audio or a video in the system? For now, no, because as you saw, it will come as a document viewer. And we, I don't know whether we have it in our rules because we only implemented what is in our rules, whether that can be at that stage uploaded. If it can, then it's a different scenario, which we will have to look into. But for now, only documents. Okay, there was the issue of if the document is rejected, if you cannot be allowed to file it again. You see, if it is rejected, there are reason why it has been rejected. So if you can go and make that correction, subject you still having time to file. For example, uh, you know, you have to file a reference within 60 days. So if you file your reference on the on the 59th day and it takes about five days or so, three days for it to be rejected, then it means you'll be out of time. In as much as you will have filed it, now uh, a limitation period will cut you off. Not unless if you filed it immediately after the, the incident occurred, maybe on the 10th day, so you have another 20 days. So that even if it is rejected, you still have time to make the correction and file it again. So it all depends on the limitation period. Otherwise, the general answer is yes, you can file it again. Well, uh, thank you very much. I don't think there are other questions. Um, I have been thinking myself that uh, do you require to, for me to do, say I'm the advocate and I've filed, I've done the online uh, filing, will you require me to do anything else uh, besides what I've done online? In, in terms of filing, do you need any physical document, uh, say sent on email to, uh, to the clerks or am I done? Then on the service of uh, documents, once it's served, we are Attorney General of Kenya through this system. That is sufficient service. I do not need to do anything else. Precisely. We are trying to get our way out of documents. So we'll not put the system into use and then again you will send us the documents. Once we flag it off, we will completely eliminate the documents. And we are taking our time so that to make sure when it's now rolled out throughout, it's quite perfect or almost perfect. Now on the issue of service again, you don't have to do something else. You saw there on the demonstrations, once Bonnie, Bonnie served online, the affidavit of service that came out showed it is him who had served. And we also told you, once it is opened the other side in the Attorney General's office, we'll also get notification of when it was opened and who opened it. So they cannot come and say, you are not served. We'll just produce the system there, but on such and such a time, and such and such a time, you opened it. So you saw it. And you can even see you logged in at 11 o'clock. You logged out at 2. So all this time, you must have read the documents. You cannot even just say, I opened, but I did not read the documents. No, what were you doing on the system all that time? You must have read the documents. So everything we want to remove the human error, 
and suspicions and leave it on the system, which you cannot fault. Yes, maybe to add on it, but for me, I think service is also uh, using electronic is, is even more better than it, it you doing it physically. Because if you look at your phone, sometimes you send someone on a WhatsApp, you'd be able to see when that person was on WhatsApp uh, last or not. So this system is, is also uh, good to, people cannot evade service. Once the AG has given us their, uh, their person, who is supposed to be receiving. Every time it is opened, every time an email is sent to them or a message, we shall be able to know that they have opened it. So it is there just that way and uh, it is so perfect. Uh, well, I think it's very commendable that uh, now we can be able to serve the ages without having to fear that uh, they will come and say, oh, we did not receive the service on time or we did not uh, receive the service at all. So the issue of delays in terms of people alleging not being served or not being served on time, I think the system cures that, which is uh, uh, very commendable. And I know the system is going to cure a lot of other uh, challenges that were being faced by uh, having to file documents, physical documents with the court. And of course, for the advocates, it's, it's an advantage because it will cut costs, I think by three quarters or so. Um, you do not have to travel, you do not have to print, and you know a lot of this is going to be saved in terms of cost, and we believe this is a, a much easier way of promoting access to justice in the region uh, compared to having people travel to Arusha now and then to come and follow up their cases. I do not want to go into the issue of hearing, maybe the, the, the his worship the registrar will touch on that a little on what happens after you've done the electronic filing uh, what then it's been done correctly the same has been forwarded to the judges what then happens uh, you know as just a small brief of what will happen after you've done this electronic filing will we then require you to come to arusha are we going to proceed with this online uh, hearings or what then happens after then probably our presenters can give their final words, then we close because I think we're also out of time. I think what happens thereafter may be optional depending on what the judges say. People can come to Arusha or we can proceed in hearing the way we have been doing virtually. Right now, maybe up three people there, you'll be seeing judges. The next line will be the lawyers. It will be optional. Like what we saw in the Dubai commercial courts, uh, lawyers were arguing their cases from anywhere after filing everything uh, electronically. So th that is a, there's no clear cut answer on that, but it will be optional. But what is important, there will be no papers. Yes. Thank you. Well, thank you, Your Worship. I do not see any other question. Uh, we, we can go ahead and give our closing remarks and then close the session. Maybe I start with uh, you, Anod. Thank you very much, uh, David, for the time and this opportunity to share. We're always at disposal. And the most important part, we need your advice. We need your feedback to improve and make sure this system is ready and is responds to our needs. Thank you. Thank you, Anod. We, we will be talking to the advocates and uh, we will be sharing. We know since places like Kenya have already launched the electronic filing. Of course, there are challenges. You try to, I've tried it myself. Sometimes you try to uh, upload documents and you, you really get stuck. So I don't think we'd want to run into such challenges when you finally roll out. So we'll be sharing what challenges have already been faced by other uh, jurisdictions that have already started applying this. I know probably when we get time, we'll get physical sessions with advocates, then uh, we can get more feedback on this. But in the meantime, we'll, we'll try to get as much feedback to you as possible so that whatever you develop is really nice and easy to use. Uh, Boniface, Karibu. Yes, thank you, David. And uh, for me, I would say, uh, this is a process. And as you have seen, when I was also going through the, the, the filing, 
it is something that you don't just uh, in one day get to actualize with it. So I would thank you for this initiative and I think it's something that should go on because uh, systems like language, it is something that needs continuous practice so that uh, you get to know it uh, well. So we shall uh, encourage more of this and uh, also more lawyers to keep on practicing and uh, uh, getting to know how the system works. Thank you. Thank you very much, Boniface. I know we will need your expert expertise going forward and uh, we might be calling you to physical sessions. So be ready also to continue sharing this knowledge. Uh, your worship, uh, welcome and please make your opening uh, closing remarks and thank you for giving us the platform to even use your experts. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, I'm sure we are going to have more of these repeated sessions again. So I'll urge the councils who are here, and I think when I was checking on the participants, there are about three councils only who have been attending, who have been appearing in our courts. The rest, I don't think they've ever appeared there, but the fact that they're there shows the interest and the intention that in future they'll be appearing in this court. That's why they want to acquaint themselves with the system well in advance. Now, for the councils who have been appearing in this court, please, next time you see it again, encourage your colleagues who appear in this court to come and learn how the system works. Otherwise, they'll be, they'll be caught off guard and they may be cut off. Uh, as we have said, it is a process. We don't expect, it, we don't expect that we'll be ready tomorrow, uh, but we also don't expect that it will take too long to be ready. So we are somewhere in between there. If it wasn't for this C19, maybe we'll have implemented it by now. Uh, so we'll continue using this platform uh, to repeat what you have said again, because you'll find next time we have it again, we'll have a completely different people until people feel they are satisfied with it before we move forward. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Your Worship. I think I've seen three three of our uh, three senior advocates who are on, uh, Mr. Semuyaba from Uganda, who has been appearing regularly before the court, uh, Ms. Faith Masharia uh, from Anjarwala in Kenya, and Wani Santino Jada from South Sudan. I think they've been very consistent and they are, they've been appearing a lot before the court. Uh, I think as we go to physical sessions, we will have more, more advocates beyond those who have been regulars. We are happy that uh, we have in this session advocates that uh, probably have appeared once or have never appeared. It's, it's an opportunity for them to see how uh, the court operates and what is required of them. And it's a good thing that we've learned the procedure, uh, more or less the procedure from Boniface. Even now, that is basically the procedure. You start by doing uh, your pleadings, then you file them, then you the service, things like those. So for those that have never appeared, I think this is an opportunity. We will be sharing after this session uh, some of the slides if Bonifaz and Arnold agree to share. Uh, I believe they will. I agree to share the same. We will be sharing with you. I will also share with you uh, previous presentations by His Worship the Registrar that generally explain what the court does uh, for your general understanding, especially if you've never appeared before this court. Otherwise, we really appreciate your time and uh, we, we thank the court for always allowing us to uh, not only use the experts, but get access to systems of this nature even before they are launched. Uh, this is a very big favor to us, your worship, and we really appreciate it. And uh, we will work more together in future to ensure that advocates that actually come before this court bring quality. They do not just appear, they come with a lot of knowledge and understanding so that uh, East Africans access justice and it's much easier for them to do so. So thank you very much. Uh, the session is now officially closed. Uh, have yourselves a nice evening till we meet again. Thank you.